Hello and welcome back to my series on building a square drop trailer frame. In the last video, I was successful at building a frame that turned out to be straight and square. And in this video, we're going to be tackling one of the most important things, the independent suspension. I wanted this trailer to be capable of going off-road, so I went with 2,200 pound axles with trailer brakes and a 4 inch lift. But before we get to that, there's something in the last video that I learned and I need to address, and that is the GoPro lenses do not do well with sparks. I jumped on the internet, ordered an inexpensive lens, and was able to easily swap it out. Oh. Works. And before tackling the more difficult challenge of putting the suspension on, I wanted an easy win. So I decided to put the rear receiver on first. The main purpose of this receiver will be for a bike rack. It could also be used for a cargo carrier if I want to bring some extra firewood. Or it could be used as a tow hook attachment in order to pull myself out of some off-road situations. I used a scrap piece of 2x2 two two to hold it square to the frame and then I welded it in. And now that the easy win is over, it's on to the suspension. The first challenge is deciding where to put the axles on the frame. I use the 60-40 rule, where 60% of the weight is supposed to be in front of the axle and 40% of the weight is supposed to be behind the axle. And then I took my best guess and transferred that into a measurement. The axle suspension comes in two parts. First is the swing arm, and the second part is the spindle that I'm unboxing here. The spindle gets mounted to the swing arm with four bolts, and later we use shims on these four bolts to help adjust the toe and the camera when doing the alignment of the trailer. For now, I'm just bolting everything together so I can help keep this thing mounted to the trailer frame. It might not look that big, but these things are heavy duty. They're made out of some thick steel. I'd imagine each side weighs around 50 pounds or so. And here I'm using some C-clamps to help hold it in place while I get it aligned with my measurements. Next, I was able to use a laser level to make sure the marks on the left side of the trailer match up with the marks on the right side of the trailer. And the most important part is that the laser goes straight down into the center of the spindle. Now that we solved the problem on where to mount them, now we have to solve the problem on how to mount them. It's my understanding that there are two different ways to mount these. The first way is by using a cross member that connects the left and right side together. The second way is by creating a metal plate on top of each of the swing arms. And since I'm not an engineer, I decided to go a little overkill and use both of these methods. And here you can see me building a template out of some blue tag board. I'm tracing this template out of some scrap steel and then cutting out by hand with an angle grinder. I used magnets to hold the metal plate into place and then I tacked it in. After I ran a bead around this plate, I repeated the same process on the driver's side. This side went a little bit quicker. The template I used on the passenger side happened to fit perfect for the driver's side. It was at this point I realized I didn't have any hardware. I just got back from the store with some grade 8 half inch bolts. I used these bolts to mount the top of the swing arm into place, but I struggled because the threads inside are filled with powder coat. So I learned my lesson and before mounting the driver's side swing arm to the frame, I was able to chase out the powder coat with a cheap tap. Then I carried the driver's side swing arm, set it in a place, and those two bolts went right in. When building those top plates, I drilled the hole slightly larger than the half inch bolt would fit. That way it allows some wiggle room in case I needed to slide the spindles forward or backwards. And after taking measurement, I had to do just that. And once I was satisfied with the exact location of the left and right side, I was able to tighten down the two bolts on top in order to get ready for the other attachment points. There are three main bolts that attach the swing arm onto the frame. And since I don't have a set of center transfer punches, I used a small nut on the end of a spring-loaded punch and use the hardened steel to make a little circle inside of each one of the holes. Mm -hmm. 
After removing the suspension, I was able to drill the holes in the correct location, and I used a small magnet to kind of chase out any metal shavings inside of the frame, and then I was able to install the suspension back onto the frame. And then I used the same process on the passenger side. I used the center punch in order to get the holes drilled in the exact locations. However, before we install the passenger side swing arm, we have to get the cross member in place first. And this is just a cut piece of 2x2 steel that slides into place. And now we can mount the passenger side suspension. After I get this bolted up, I'm going to lift up the trailer in the air, and then I'm going to slide the cross member into place. And this piece needs two holes drilled on the passenger side and two holes drilled on the driver's side in order to be mounted. After the holes are drilled, you can install the two bolts on each side. It's much easier to install the medial or the inner bolts first and then do the lateral or the outer bolts next. Now that the suspension is mounted, we can move on to the wheels and tires. I wanted to go with the same wheel and tire combo that's on our tow vehicle. It's a 34 inch tire on Hummer H2 rims. This requires using wheel adapters to go from a Jeep 5 lug into a Chevy 8 lug. And since the studs on the tempering kit stick out above the mating surface of that wheel adapter, I had to cut them down. And as you just saw, I used the angle grinder to cut them off rounded off the top, and then I backed off the lug nuts to make sure the treads remain true. And now we're ready to mount the hubs with brakes to the spindles. I started by organizing the bearings, and then I separated the hub from the brake assembly, and I grabbed the brake assembly and brought it over to the trailer. There is a left and a right side for trailer brakes. The easiest way to tell is that the magnet is always on the bottom, the smaller shoe is towards the front, and the actuating arm is also towards the front. There are four studs on the back of the brake hub that go through the spindle, and those are attached with a lock washer and a nut. And then I repeated the exact same process, installing the brake assembly on the driver's side. And here I'm getting ready to install the hubs with bearings onto the spindles. In order to do that, you first have to put the inner bearing into the hub, and then put the inner seal around that. I've only packed trailer bearings a couple times in my life, but I do know I'm supposed to use a GCLD type of grease. It's just a high temperature, high speed wheel bearing grease. And the slower you go when packing the bearings, the better. If you do it a little bit too fast, it becomes frothy, you get some air in it. The goal is to go slow and make sure that the grease is pressed into every little nook and cranny of the bearings. Next, in order to keep the grease within the bearings, we have to put a seal on the back. The seal is pressed in. I happen to have a piece of PVC fitting that was about the right size diameter. I used that to help pound in the seal. There's not much skill to this. You just make sure that the seal goes down straight and sits flush. And then I carried the brake hub over and set it on the spindle. Next, we get the outer bearing. We pack grease in it. And then we're going to place the outer bearing over the spindle. This will be followed by the outer seal. And we'll put the axle nut on top of this. And we'll tighten it down a little bit to seat the bearings. Then after we fill it with a little bit more grease, we're going to set the tension on the bearings. In order to do this, you just back off the pressure of the axle nut. And if you've never done this before, you might be surprised on how loose the axle nut is. What you want is the hub to spin freely on the spindle without any wobble or rattle at all. This ends up being about finger tight with the axle nut. And then you secure the nut with a pin, and next, you install the dust shield. Again, no scale here. Just pound it in, make sure it sits flush. And then we get to repeat the exact same process on the driver's side. First, we put the outer bearing into the hub, followed by the outer seal. Carry that over to the brake assembly, set that on top of the spindle, pack the outer bearing with grease, set that on the spindle, followed by the seal, the axle nut, set the tension, and put the pin in, and then the dust shield. And now for another milestone moment of the trailer build, we get to mount the tires to the frame for the first time. And I have to admit, I'm liking the way it sits. We have about two feet of ground clearance. 
which is way more than most tow vehicles. I think the suspension turned out great, and I can't wait to get some weight on this trailer to see how it actually moves. In the upcoming videos, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be slowly adding weight to this trailer. Join us for the next part of the series where we work on the fenders and the tongue of the trailer.